Constantin Brancusi are being staged this week in Romania and abroad. The government in Bucharest on Thursday passed an emergency ordinance under which a series of budget expenditures are being cut. The measures include maintaining the present value of the pension point until 2022, the cancellation of the 30% bonus granted to prefectures for managing the medical crisis, and of the holiday gift vouchers. According to Prime Minister Kutsu, the draft budget for this year is to be passed on Friday, which is targeting a 7.60% of the GDP and significant funds for investment. Also on Thursday, the Romanian government adopted a draft law on dismantling the controversial department for investigating offences in the country's legal system. This is a pledge made by the ruling coalition and also a recommendation for the observance of the verification and control mechanism, the ministry explained. The Romanian Defence Minister Nikolai Chuka, taking part in a meeting of NATO Defence Ministers, pointed out Romania's commitment to covering defence expenditure. He reaffirmed Bucharest's support for deepening and strengthening NATO's defence and deterrence posture in line with medium and long-term security requirements. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg suggested the alliance should increase funding for joint defence and deterrence activities. One of the reasons for suggesting increased NATO funding for deterrence and defence is that this will incentivize more allies to provide more capabilities, especially in the Baltic and Black Sea regions, the NATO chief explained. Jens Stoltenberg also said the alliance needs to invest more in new technologies, including artificial intelligence and quantum computing. A number of events devoted to Constantin Brancusi's National Day, celebrated every year in Romania on February the 19th, are organized across the country this week to mark 135 years since the great sculptor's birth. On Friday, the Tinerima Romuna National Art Center will give a special concert devoted to this occasion and illustrated with images of Brancusi's works on display at the National Museum of Art. Also on Friday, an exhibition entitled Mirrors of Brancusi opens at the Romanian Peasant Museum. On Saturday, the National Library has an event entitled 
dialogues at the table of silence. 145 years since the birth of sculptor Konstantin Brankuzi. The event is held online on Zoom platform and can also be followed on the YouTube channel of the National Library of Romania. In turn, the Romanian Cultural Institute in Bucharest, Brussels, Chisinau, Lisbon, London, Madrid and Paris have scheduled online events devoted to the world-famous Romanian artist. Roughly 40,000 vaccine doses have been administered in Romania in the past 24 hours, mostly produced by Pfizer, AstraZeneca and Moderna, all three approved by the European Union. Since the vaccination campaign kicked off on December 27th last year, nearly 1,300,000 doses have been administered to more than 750,000 people. In other development, 3,058 new cases of COVID infections have been reported in the past 24 hours. Since the onset of the pandemic, Romania has confirmed over 771,000 cases with a death toll exceeding 19,600. 936 people are presently being treated in IC units. The European Commission announced a deal was signed with Moderna for an additional 150 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine to be delivered this year and confirmed the previous agreement on the purchase of another 200 million doses of Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. And that was the news from Radio Romania International in Bucharest. After six years, the European Town decided to give up the special pension. And the Federation put this commentary by Bogdan Mate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A recent survey on Romanian's trust in institutions shows that the whole world is dominated by the church, the army and the academy, and in with the government, parliament and political parties. From the right to the left of the political spectrum, from power or from the opposition, long lived or ephemeral politics. There have been dozens of deputies and senators who are the protagonists of notorious criminal cases. The most famous such politicians are the former speakers of the Chamber of Deputies, the Social Democrats, Adrian Nostase and Ligrena, and the Liberal Bogdan Oltano, all three imprisoned on corruption charges. Teaching political parties according to interest, nepotism, incompetence, failure to go to work are some of the sins that the press and public opinion frequently associate with MPs. It actually makes it more unpopular their privileges, mainly their high salaries and special pensions that do not actually observe the contribution principle. Introduced in 2015 by the Social Democratic Party, which at the time was led by Ingrid Dragnea, a very generous person when it came to public money, the MPs special pensions were the first category abrogated on Wednesday by Parliament. At present, there are about 800 former senators and deputies who receive special pensions, which reach over 10 million euros cumulatively per year. The abrogation of special pensions was initiated also by the Social Democratic Party, now in opposition, which under the leadership of Archel Tolak is trying to build a new image. Parliament also adopted an amendment proposed by the Save Romania Union Plus Alliance and the governing coalition, which stipulates that when the law takes effect, the payment of age limit benefits ceases. The Alliance for President Dan Barma says that eliminating special pensions is a moral victory. The MPs thus washing away some of their sins. The leader of the National Liberal Party, Ludovic Orban, also announced that the current coalition is committed to clarifying and adjusting the entire pension legislation. In an attempt to return to a fair and just system for all pensioners, as the MPs stated during the vote, all political forces including the ultra-nationalist opposition party, the Alliance for the Union of Romanians, voted in favor of eliminating MPs' pensions. The Democratic Union of Ethnic Hungarians in Romania in the government coalition abstained from voting, as they claim the move is incomplete 
and there's no one to target the other social ca professional categories. The expansion will not observe the contribution principles, such as the magistrates, the military, the intelligence service officers, and the police. The ethnic Hungarians' representatives say they cannot vote to official decisions, which are apparently popular, but which do not solve the problem itself. The problem itself, as experts also notice, is that there are many Romanians who have very high pensions of over 2,000 euros. Many at home have not reached the retirement age or have not paid the entire retirement contribution, while 5 million pensioners have pensions worth an average of only 300 euros. been a lot of protests in Romania lately. Trade unionists say that the austerity budget proposed by the government would prolong the economic crisis and lower living standards. I'm Elena Inata with more on this topic in a report by Corina Krista. Unsatisfied with the draft state budget law and the ordinances related to it, trade unions' representatives staged protests in the capital Bucharest in front of the government building and of the offices of the parties making up the central right coalition, as well as in front of a number of prefects' offices. They argue the austerity budget will prolong the economic crisis, lowering living standards and condemning citizens to poverty. Decent work, social justice and social dialogue is the slogan of the trade unionists affiliated with the Genese Cartel Alpha, who on their fifth week of protest picketed the offices of the Ustaratus Alliance and the government headquarters. Protesters are asking for decent wages, fair pensions, quality public services and the unblocking of collective bargaining. The freezing of families for various categories of workers and the elimination of holiday vouchers is also a reason for discontent, as protesters fear this may affect the hospitality industry, a sector already highly affected by the restrictions imposed in the context of the sanitary crisis. Cartel Alpha's General Secretary, Petri Banda, explains. Romania se află într o fază de criză economică, nu vi cu măsuri de austeritate. Romania is in the grip of an economic crisis. No austerity measures should be imposed in this context because they only make things worse. The government does not seem to understand that. This is our goal, to convince the ministers and the government to come up with development policies which we don't have at this point. That was Petru Banda. Representatives of Solidaritatea Sanitară Federation protested at the headquarters of the National Workers' Party, the main party of the ruling coalition, and then at the government's headquarters. They asked more money for the healthcare system, the observance of the legal rights and protection measures for healthcare workers who face higher risks than they did before the pandemic, and the bonuses are not the same. The Publishing Federation, affiliated with the National Trade Union Bloc, employees from the police, public administration, social assistance, finance and financial control also protested against measures likely to trigger a decrease in the public servant salaries. Trade union leader Cosmin Andreica. This is the seventh week of protest. We protest because the law is not enforced, because Romania is ruled through emergency ordinances. We saw at the end of last year that the government issued an emergency ordinance that prevents the salary law from 2017 from taking effect, a law aimed at doing away with inequalities and discrimination in the system. Employees with the public wage system also protested in Bucharest, unhappy with the lack of investment in rail infrastructure and the small salaries. They argued that the number of rail workers is insufficient and the railway is on the verge of collapse due to the lack of any investment in the last 30 years, and that has been our newscast. Time now for Heat of the Day on Radio Romania International. Listen to Nicole Panuka and her hit, Last Time.
the urban area is spectacular. Not far away from Dubot, the words for reason, we reach the Geneva. The Geneva are remaining with the Marines. It is a unique place to hear. It is a protected natural area stretching over three hectares. Famous mostly for its irregular grouping of crags, they appeared out of a phenomenon of destructive erosion they call struck. They have strange shapes and have names inspired by local culture. The story of Dipton's Sweet Town Miss Nazano Museum of Art and History. It is adapting to new technologies and transfer this type of institution, says Richard Rosa. The museum has developed a modern concept and offers an incursion into its history for present technologies, virtual or augmented reality, and 3D modeling. Also, they are considering a new exhibition model under the title of I Want to Go to the Museum. At the forefront, they have three exhibitions. The museum is keeping up with what is happening in the world, and there are many things to show, especially during this difficult period when it is hard to anticipate what will happen in tourism. Then we have villages where people with passion go living museums or village museums. We can mention the Yabod Airport, Frank Gaz Village. This museum gathered thousands of exhibits. She created a village with a few households, which is now growing. She did everything with her own funding and passion. This example was followed by other young people in the county who organized events that reference local customs. For instance, in Marine Village, they revived traditional events such as the barn, wedding, and fair dances. <laughs> The legend is well known in the country for its production of wine and local liquor, Farinka. There is Vita Groza with a Salage Plus Association for Entertainment and Development. The Farinka Jalo, we can say safely, is a local brand. We also have wine cellars that continue to function and can be visited. Beekeeping is also widespread in Salaj. And of course, I couldn't forget my great passion, gastronomy. For the last 30 years, I've been researching traditional cuisine. In Salaj County alone, I identified and documented 397 recipes of soups, different in name, ingredients, and taste. I've also explained that Romania is represented in cuisine by two special things county vegetable soups and soups, and sour soups, and stews. We have an incredible diversity. In Salaj alone, we have over 170 different recipes for stews documented or reconstituted by myself. The tourist has the opportunity to experience these special preparations. And there you have it, the perfect destination for everyone, especially for families with kids. Agro-tourism is also well developed, so you won't have to worry about finding accommodation, and you can find out the story of village preparations and dishes, some of them centuries old. You have been listening to Traveler's Guide today about Salaj Cat. Roberta Tuber is 21 years old and comes from Krajowa in southern Romania. 
She's now in her third year at University College London in the UK, where she's studying psychology. Since September, she has been running the UK branch of the League of Romanian Students Abroad. Roberta has been in the UK since 2018 and says in the beginning she found it hard to adjust because she feels she has integrated well now and likes it there. She says the UK branch of the League of Romanian Students Abroad has some 200 active volunteers, but that there are even more students who take part in the League's events than messages and get involved, given that there are some 9,000 young Romanians studying in the UK. Despite the pandemic and all the restrictions, the League did manage to carry out a few projects last year. The League's biggest and most important event is the Conference of Romanian Students, Professors and Researchers in the UK, which was held last November and where we talked about Brexit and its impact on the Romanian students and other Romanians living in the UK. We also organized an event called In Conversation With, where we have a different guest each time. This time we had Catherine West, who is in the British Parliament and who was involved in both the process of UK's withdrawal from the European Union and in the transition process. She also talked about Brexit and its consequences for European citizens. Apart from these events, the League is very much focused on information campaigns about Brexit and the necessary papers needed to continue to live in the UK and about education during the pandemic, Roberta Chubert said. This year, the UK branch of the League of Romanian Students Abroad is working on two initiatives to help the Romanian students who are already in the UK and others who might wish to study them. Roberta Chubert explains. We'd like to organize an event where students tell us about their experience of studying and living in the UK, such as students who perhaps did an internship in the UK or who have a job there. Right now, it's quite difficult to find a job or apply for a job, and many companies and research centers can't tell if they want to interview with the job applicant in person or if they're doing it online. So we thought maybe we can learn from the experience of older students. We would also like to put together a kind of student guide with practical advice for young Romanians who are about to come to the UK. Roberta Chubert. Roberta has been in Romania since March last year, when the world came to a standstill because of the coronavirus pandemic. She says the courses are held online so she can study remotely. In the future, she would like to do a master's degree and then look for a job in research, marketing or data analytics. I'm flexible about the future. When the time comes, I'll probably look at the employment opportunities available in the UK and Romania and choose the best option. I'd like to return to Romania, but I'm also open to the idea of staying in the UK for a while and gather experience. I can only return to Romania when I have formed a better picture of the job market and the employment opportunities. Roberta Chubert, a third-year student at University College London and the head of the UK branch of the League of Romanian Students Abroad. Next in this program, Sports. Welcome everyone to Sports Flash. I'm Vlad Falco. Romania's women's handball team next week will take part in a friendly tournament ahead of the pre-Olympic tournament in Montenegro. Coach Adrian Vasile will not be able to attend the boot camp after testing positive for COVID-19, the Romanian Handball Federation has announced. The training campaign will be conducted in Bucharest and will be coordinated by Romania's second in command, Bent Dahl of Norway. Attending the friendly tournament will also be Norway and Kazakhstan. The top two ranking teams will qualify to the Olympic Games, scheduled to take place in Tokyo later this year. In other news from Hamburg, let us note that in a match counting towards the 10th round in the domestic championship, Dunera Breila grabbed a dramatic 29 to 23 over Magura Chisnadia due to a last minute goal scored by Breila. In another fixture, in our Bayamari Cross, 30 to 22 at CN Telva. Also on Wednesday, Rapid Bucharest grabbed its third victory this season, 
winning 24 to 20 against Sacha and Yes, tables with 27 points in all matches, followed by Laura Bayamara with 25 points in 10 matches. Currently enrolled at Star Bucharest Sports Club, this Wednesday won the last table championship after defeating the young this year of Dinamo Bucharest in the final. A total of 31 fences took part in the competition. The national championship will continue with the men's individual third finals scheduled for Saturday. The AP finals are scheduled for next week, the women's finals on Wednesday, and the men's finals on Thursday. And this has been all in Sports Flash Today. Our sport items are available at our rival row and on Listen to music highlights on Black Taipu. Cornel Spavri was one of the greatest Romanian tenors. He passed away in 2015, and in 2020 his wife published his biography. Accompanying the book is a little CD, including some of his best stage performances. For our first music segment today, listen to Maria Rico's aria from Verdi, Mother.
Now, before you perform on the stage of the Canadian Opera, I go to rest on April 20th, 1964, performing Boris's Humor Pivieta Aria from Umberto Giordano's Zenith. Let's have a listen.
追啊！